Today's stamp is flanked Bright Elmstone, which later became known as Brighton, the largest town in the county of Sussex. Its outstanding attraction is the Raw Pavilion, our postcard today. The Royal Pavilion started out as a respectable farmhouse rented by George, the young Prince of Wales, for his trips to Brighton. I have no qualms in telling you all that this is one of my most favourite buildings in the country. And I also don't mind telling you this is the first time I've ever been inside. Share that experience with me. The table is ready as if for a meal set out for the dessert course. I did not know that it's bad manners, also nowadays, to eat a main course with golden cutlery. Were you aware of that? It's terribly nouveau riche, don't do it. <laughs> main, <laughs> main course, I beg you, use the simple silver. Gold is only reserved for dessert. That crystal chandelier in the center actually weighs one ton and is nine meters high. Helenka, this reminds me of King Henry VIII's kitchens in Hampton Court. Not dissimilar, they're absolutely huge, aren't yes, they? Yes, very, very big. This kitchen was designed by John Nash. Buckingham Palace, John Nash? John Nash, exactly, the very same. And it was considered to be a state-of-the-art kitchen at the time. And this was because mostly the kitchens were generally small and dark and gloomy. And one of the interesting things is that the kitchens were often so far away from the banqueting room that by the time the food arrived on the table, it was cold. So this kitchen, which is right next to the banqueting room, was ideal. Now, George was not known as an early riser, I suppose because he liked gay evenings and thoroughly enjoying himself. And he'd come in here of a morning, probably yawning, and get down to business. Now, this is probably the reason why he was kept up late, because this is one of just only a couple of stalls that they have left. And Although he didn't really sing very well, he did love music and thought of himself as a bit of a nightingale. And he employed an orchestra to entertain him. And these are the little stools on which his orchestra sat. Does that look three-dimensional to you? Optical illusion. That is absolutely flat. But it's painted in such a way that from a distance, it looks as though, of course, it's come out from the wall. And this is... Well, perhaps one of George's most favourite rooms. Only if you were one of his most intimate buddies could you come in here and, and while away the late afternoons and into the evening with him. Now, this was George's music room, and it said that when he first saw this room, he wept because of the beauty of it. And I must admit, I have not been one bit disappointed about this Royal Pavilion. It is quite stunning, quite perfect. This oriental style here of protective dragons and chandeliers. There's a little door here, and at night it would undoubtedly open because either the prince or his latest mistress would come here and their liaison would take place. Not that I'm going to say anything about that because I'm not, I'm not one to gossip. This isn't his bed, but this is where his bed would have been. But that is a replica, and through there would have been his bathroom. But when Queen Victoria came, she wasn't very keen on Brighton. She thought it was too busy. And Victoria took most of the things, or as much as she could lay her hands on, and actually took it away from the Royal Pavilion back to various places in London with her. Even the glorious carpet in the music room she took the original and had it all cut up and laid in the servants' quarters. I'm <laughs> not amused. You've got to say exquisite, so I'll say it. Exquisite. Not been disappointed at all with the Royal Pavilion here in Brighton. It really is something else. <laughs> 